afternoon folks. Beautiful spring day, nice and warm. A wonderful day for splashing in puddles. One of the things we are very concerned about on the estate, of course, is water. Now, having been through that dry spell, the Western Cape, most people are aware of water and how limited it is. If you take the global supply, basically one tenth is available for human consumption or human use, let me put it this way. Of that 10%, 1% is available for human consumption. Most of the water in the world is locked up in the oceans and the ice caps and things like that. Africa, as I said, is a dry continent and everybody should be aware of that and do their best to not only conserve the, the little bit of water we've got, but ensure it's not getting polluted. Now, pollution can take many forms. Obviously, solid pollution like plastic bags, broken bottles, that's visible. But chemical pollution is also a critical um, factor. On the estate, <clears throat> a lot of people use fertilizers on their gardens, on our open areas, on the golf course. Those chemicals leach into the soil, they travel through the soil and into our water bodies. And that's why occasionally we get the nitrogen um, blooms, which create the algae, and so on and so on. Algae, by the way, is just nature's way of balancing things out. It takes out the phosphates and the nitrates out of water. But be that as it may, <clears throat> what I do is I come down to the Pearl Valley Creek, runs through the golf course, and I do a monitoring program called the mini SAS, which is an acronym for the mini, uh, mini Stream Assessment Program. This is a man-made stream, but it has evolved and developed into what would actually be a lowland mountain stream. So I go in and I check for the microorganisms in here, the little insects. The presence or absence of various species will tell me a lot about the water quality. I then go down to the Berg River and do the same there. And that way I can basically have got a uh, a very good idea of the Pearl Valley Lake quality and of course the Berg River. Now unfortunately there's no such uh, process for lakes so I can't do it on each individual lake but certainly where I can I will. It's a very easy process once you know and uh, how to identify the organisms. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to splash around have a look see what is in here. Okay so once we've got a uh, a sample we put it in the white tray the whiteness just helps us uh, pick out the individual organisms in this tray it's not looking very bad at all obviously the most obvious are the two young crabs excellent otter food we've got a damselfly nymph there a damselfly looks like a dragonfly a lot of them flying around but they fold their backs uh, their wings along their body. We've got a number of gnat nymphs or larvae. This one here, commonly referred to as a bloodworm, because very f unusual for an insect, it's actually got hemoglobin in the blood. This one here looks like a little stonefly, which is excellent news. That'll tell me that this little stream is in excellent condition because stoneflies you'll generally find only in very clean water. Little dragonfly nymph there, also not unexpected because there's a lot of dragonflies operating. Now this is a fairly small sample if you take the full um, length of this creek, but look at all this life in here, all the different forms. Biodiversity of course is critical to any uh, living area and this shows me the biodiversity is very very good in this creek at the moment. Now the water is warming up as the summer uh, approaches and the water warms up even more we'll get an explosion of life. Now this is the animal life. If you look at the plant life all these plants on the creek edge on a river's edge, on a lake edge, we call it the riparian zone, 
are very important parts of the ecosystem because that's where all these little organisms hide, where they feed. A lot of them feed on detritus and others rotting plant material. They're nursery zones for small fish and all that sort of thing. And that's why we try and preserve the riparian zones as much as possible. They also act as a buffer between the upland and the water. They will catch a lot of the, um, the pollutants, either solid or chemical pollutants. That way the water remains as clean as possible. Because this is circulating throughout the lakes, from this I can tell the lakes are in very good condition. As it circulates it would pick up problems and so we'd pick them up here. Things would change. So we've moved down to the banks of the Berg River. I haven't been able to test this area for a while because the water's been quite high. A lot of people don't realize that in South Africa only three major river streams run into the Atlantic Ocean. Most of them run to the east, to the Indian. And this is one of them. The Berg, the Ulifants, up uh, running through Clen the Clan William area. And then of course the Orange, right up in the Northern Cape. So it's a very important river and one that's well worth preserving. The problem with most of our water bodies in South Africa is not so much pollutants in the Western Cape, but it's non-indigenous fish. Here in the Berg River, the catfish, the barbel, smallmouth bass and carp have pretty much decimated two of the uh, indigenous species, the Berg River vitifus and the Berg River red uh, redfin minnow. And that's through direct competition, but also bass being predators will eat them. They're still found right up in the uh, top end of the catchment above the Berg River Dam, but locally they're extinct. And one of my dreams is actually to bring these fish back and possibly have breeding, a breeding program on the estate for re-establishment back in the river. What is a man without a dream? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out, do exactly the same uh, netting uh, process, turning over the rocks, see, uh, sort of catching whatever floats out from underneath them, and hopefully we'll find that the river, just like the creek, is in very good nick. Okay, as I suspected, just like in the creek, crabs, We've got some bloodworms in here, damselfly and uh, mayfly larva, a stonefly and midgey larva. People have a look at a system like this and look at it in terms of humans. What we have to remember it's an aquatic system. Algae is basically the meadows of a river. So when you see a lot of algae on these rocks, that is what all these organisms are basically feeding on. The algae photosynthesizes just like land plants. It's a source of energy. So all these little larvae feed on the algae. Up in the mountains where you have these clear streams with clean pebbles, not a lot of life in there. Um, so these systems, or this system at the moment, is very healthy. That's what the organisms are telling me. We'll be checking in on it throughout the summer and hopefully that will continue. Okay, thanks very much for your time. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Feel free to leave a comment. And if you've got any questions, please let us know about those as well.